Um, we'll allow some more people to join in and, uh, and get comfortable. So welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. My name is Lala Bloomer, and I'm the Eastern Canada Organizer with For Our Kids. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. I know there's a lot going on this weekend, so I really appreciate you being here with us. And I'm really looking forward to spending the next hour with you uh, and with the amazing presenters and the musicians that we've got lined up for you today. I think it's going to be uh, an incredible experience. Um, I'm going to introduce you first of all to Galen Armstrong, who is a 4 Kids organizer in Western Canada. Hi. And yeah, hi Galen. Uh, you'll see Galen via the chat. He's going to be monitoring the chat box uh, for us. Um, if any of you are not familiar with the chat function, you'll find it. It's either at the bottom of your screen or on the right hand side of your screen. And you can type questions or comments in there uh, as we go through. Um, and we are going to have um, a Q&A session after all of the presenters are finished. So as you listen to them this afternoon, please just go ahead and type your questions into the chat box and Galen will collect those and we'll bring them forward uh, during the Q&A session a little bit later on. Um, but for now, maybe as you're joining us and, and getting connected, um, we'd love for you to um, just connect with us, type in your name and um, we'd like to hear one thing today um, that's giving you hope, whatever that is, because that's something that we need and uh, can be in short supply sometimes. So one thing today that's giving you hope, that'd be great. Um, and we'll, we'll keep an eye on, on them as they go by in the chat box. Hi to those of you who are just joining us now. Uh, we're just getting underway. Um, so I've introduced you to Galen. I also would like to let you know that Matt Price, who is the coordinator uh, for For Our Kids, is also on the call today. And for those of you who aren't familiar with For Our Kids, I'll give you a little bit of a, of a background. Um, we're a network of parents and grandparents across Canada supporting community-based climate action. Our motivation is love for our kids and grandkids and um, along with the determination to keep them safe against the threats that climate change poses to their future. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to visit For Our Kids website, you can check it out at forourkids.ca and there's a way for you to get involved there. You can sign up on the website. Uh, you can always message us on social media too. Um, and either Galen or I would be more than happy to talk with you depending on which part of the country you're living in. Uh, so we will also put up a link to our website at the end of at the end of the session today. Uh, and a couple last uh, housekeeping notices. We are recording this session, just so you're aware, uh, and we'll share the link afterwards. Uh, we'll send it out to you via email, but we'll also be posting that on the For Our Kids um, Facebook page. And I also want to let you know, give you a heads up, that we're going to be hosting another session. Our next online session is going to be on Friday, June 19th, so six weeks from today. And it will have a Father's Day theme. Mm. So make sure you mark your calendars for that. So uh, just before we get underway, um, I'd like to center us a little bit. Um, by acknowledging that although we're all situated in different locations today, we are all on land that has a long relationship with Indigenous peoples who've cared for it over thousands of years. So where I am today in southwestern Ontario is traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, Lenape, Adewanderon, and Wendat peoples. Uh, and they recognize, as we do today, that the land gives us life. And right now we're seeing that life everywhere as the seasons turn to spring. Um, and those signs of spring give us hope, even in the midst of these uncertain times we're facing. Um, and hope is, in many ways, what being a parent is all about. Uh, we're talking a lot about being parents today, especially about being a mother. And I'm very excited to introduce our musical guest, the Reed Jamison Band, uh, who will be performing a song that is entirely apropos for our Mother's Day theme. Um, their music has been described as gorgeous, sunstruck soul by the Globe and Mail. And they've appeared regularly on CBC's Vinyl Cafe and have recorded with the Cowboy Junkies. And they have a new album out, which uh, we'll let them tell you about at the end of the session. So stay tuned for that. 
Uh, but for now, here they are. Uh, welcome and uh, take it away. Hey there. Well, thank, thank you. you very much, Lella. Um, we're the Reed Jameson Band. I'm Carolyn. This is my handsome husband, Reed. And uh, we're, um, well, what gives us hope right now is the community is coming together. Um, we're really seeing that here in Vancouver, just, just on that local level to, uh, to make a change. And um, we don't have children, so we're leaving it to you guys to do the, the really heavy lifting, but, uh, but we can honor the moms and, uh, of the world. And that's something we're gonna do right now. And this song's really special to us. Uh, we wrote this, um, well, Reed's mom passed away when he was only 14, almost 15, and she was only 35. So uh, she never, he never got to the part where, you know, when you realize how right your mom was, <laughs> and there's all these lessons she was trying to tell you and you were ignoring them and then you get older and you realize, oh man, you know, that's what I should have been listening to all along. So uh, <clears throat> we wanted to honor uh, mom's voices with this song. So um, this one's uh, for all of you gals. It's called Mama's Day. One day is not enough time to celebrate you, Mama. I may need oh, plenty more times too And maybe even that won't do Ever since I was just a little boy Mama said to me Don't fool around what goes around There's nothing that you need when your friends start chiming in, don't you be mean. When in the end, every dot you send will only make you bleed. Listen to what mama said. You tell the truth and make your bed. Be kind on time and use your head now. Listen to what mama said. When there was only a little left, she'd save it for me. And when I failed a test, she said, you try your best, there's nothing you can't be. And when she tried to hide that her eyes were red and never let me see. She said, go on ahead, I'll just rest a bit, don't you worry about me, no. Listen to what mama said. You tell the truth and make your bed. Be kind on time and use your head now Just listen to what mama said Oh, if I had my way I'd celebrate you every day, you know, cause Every day is mama's day to me La, 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 hey Every day is Mama's day. La 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 la, hey hey. Every day is Mama's day. La 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 la, la hey, hey. My mama said, Every day don't is Mama's day. La 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 la, say, hey, hey. My mama said, Every don't day you is Mama's day. La 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 la, la say, hey. my mama say, every day is mama's day. One day is not enough time to celebrate you, mama. Wow. That was Thank our very you. first live stream. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna amazing. unmute everyone so they can give you a little cheer. Hey, that was amazing! Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful pandemic, way. Who has pandemic bangs? <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful way to start this off. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. And to follow that up, we'll bring we'll bring one of our uh, one of our fearless mom leaders uh, forward as a presenter. So our first 
speaker is Natalie Kane, and Natalie has been a facilitator, a campaigner, a, and a community builder in grassroots movements and in nonprofits for more than 15 years. And she's been a mama for 4.75 years. <laughs> uh, her current passion project is coordinating Pour Nos Enfants for Our Kids Montreal. And her balancing act is being the mom that she wants to be while trying to help build a supportive, effective, and resilient climate justice movement. And in Natalie's own words, thankfully, we are in that together. So welcome, Natalie. Thanks very much for being our first speaker this afternoon. And I believe Natalie is going to share her screen and she's got a few slides that she's going to uh, share with you. Yeah, thank you so much, Lola. And yeah. so good to be with you all today. I'm, I feel like we're getting an extended Mother's Day weekend. Um, yeah. And the song is beautiful, thank you. Um, yeah, so. We've got some uh, audio problems. I am uh, a climate activist. Uh, you can't hear me? Now you're, you're back. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I was thinking there might be new folks to the movement on the call now too. And I thought um, I'd just share a little bit about how I got here into doing this work. Um, so... Did that work? Yeah. So I put together a little slideshow to kind of give myself some memories of how I got started and how I got into for our kids organizing. Um, so my first climate action ever was back in 2003 in Ireland. So that picture there um, in front of an SO gas station. And I can't, I was 20 years old, I think, and was doing an exchange abroad in Ireland. And um, I wasn't, I was a pretty shy person and didn't really ever see myself talking to a group of people like this, being a spokesperson in a movement or, you know, being in the spotlight of any kind, but I was really, really inspired by seeing other people do that type of work and I wanted to make a difference. And I didn't really have any idea <laughs> on the solutions for global warming, as it was called at the time, but I saw in the news and I went to this environment at my university and as a creative uh, nonviolent direct action outside of this ESSO station. Um, I can now even remember the point of the campaign or the strategy. The gas mask a little bit now in our context of this pandemic, um, but it was really exciting and I met such um, open people who really welcomed me and there was a, a big age difference in our group like there were some older activists who really took on mentorship and helping new people like me learn some things and so that kind of launched my life in a totally new direction um, and I ended up uh, in the second set of photos there in the Netherlands and across Europe working for an organization called European Youth for Action and we did a lot of training and conferencing and supporting the environmental and social justice movements and bringing people together to create movements. Most of my work was from behind a computer, but I got to spend summers um, in big, huge circles doing non hierarchical organizing and campaigning. And that again, shaped my life and kind of pushed me to the next thing. Um, and when I moved back to Canada, I was very, very fortunate to first volunteer and then get a job within um, the environmental movement at Greenpeace Canada. So most of my experience comes from that in a bigger formal international organization doing creative nonviolent direct action. Um, back in 2009, my colleagues and volunteers and activists dropped a banner on the Ottawa Parliament buildings um, calling for government action on climate change. So I really got a tool, a toolbox of ways we can use creative tactics to make change. But the most rewarding part of that history was working with people organizing big creative mobilizations and marches and creative actions. Um, also in Toronto, I did some activism with music. So uh, for the G20 protest that happened in 2010, some friends and I started a 
uh, a band to play in the streets and help kind of inspire crowds to um, in protest. Um, and then all that changed in 2015 when I became a mom. Um, my partner and I actually met in our activist band, um, had a kid and we moved to Vancouver and then to Montreal and all of my activism kind of stopped. Um, like most of you who are parents on the call, I'm sure you remember that life-changing moment when you had a kid and everything changed. Um, and for me, it was very um, challenging to not be connected to movements and not feel like they were accessible for me with a young child. And so when I moved to Montreal and started thinking about doing organizing work with parents, I was so thrilled to find for our kids and find some other like-minded parents and a larger network across Canada who were thinking on that wavelength and making community for people like me. Um, so yeah, my activism has really changed in, in that long decade. Um, but I think the, the overarching thing that I've learned or really, um, I guess, value from all the change making I've done is the community that, we, that I've built, um, that we build together. And it's that community power and that connection with each other that I believe really makes lasting change, both on a local level, but also in government policy and corporate policy. Um, you know, what we accomplish as a bigger movement has to do with the community we're, we're building and the tactics we're doing together. Um, also knowing that there's maybe people on this call in newer groups or haven't found a group yet, I just wanted to share a few lessons that I've learned in this time over the decades and all these different types of roles. Um, so top five lessons that I've learned as an organizer. Um, one especially goes out to people that are new and not in a group yet. We really all have a role to play. I know as a shy young person, <laughs> I really didn't see how I could be like any of those activists I saw being interviewed on TV. Um, but there's so many roles that need filling that have different varying levels of being in the public eye or not. So from writing emails, press releases, cooking food, bringing snacks to meetings, um, being in the streets, just showing up, artwork, getting on a megaphone, doing media interviews, the grandmother who's doing childcare, so maybe her kids can be involved in activism, uh, facilitation work, contacting politicians, helping throw parties <laughs> to celebrate, doing social work, that care work, all of that is really important um, and helps keep communities going to be able to function and do important campaign work. Um, I guess connected to that is the relationships that we build. Um, so that's my second biggest lesson is, especially in this time of the health pandemic with COVID, the group that we have in Montreal has really been an important personal support to me and we've all shared that sentiment on our meetings. So even when we can't be together physically, those friendships and relationships that we build over time um, really help us in life, not just in winning things <laughs> and social change. Um, and they're also really important, important to cross movement. So there might be a bunch of different groups in your town doing different types of activism, but creating relationships and doing that movement building really does help us be stronger. We can be diverse, we can have different focuses, but knowing we're supported and with a larger movement um, really help us feel less alone and more effective. Um, and, and one other thing about relationships, I guess, is mentorship. So just as I was really taken care of when I joined uh, doing, doing activism, I think it's important that we're supporting the youth strikers, that we are, as older people, bringing that mentorship and that experience into um, the larger climate change movement because um, we lose a lot of wisdom when we're not able to participate or be here. Um, my third big lesson is capacity building and sort of a cheat as a second sub one is campaigning. So um, I have found that groups I've been involved with who kind of take capacity building and learning new skills and doing trainings and workshops together kind of end up building cohesive knowledge and sort of like intellectual understandings. So they're all on the same page and kind of get, oh, this is how we can make change. So learning about social change history and social movements, either through reading a book or maybe doing a campaign training together can really help keep you focused. So you're less likely to get distracted or burnt out or frustrated. 
um, and it can also help with that relationship building at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of great training organizations that do activist training for kids, I think also has a lot of network connections with many of them. I've listed some there at the bottom, but some have like guides and how to's and lots of really helpful things if you feel like your group's ready to maybe take on training, especially in this time when we're stuck at home and are maybe looking for something effective to do. I really think um, training together can be an effective way to build power within your group. Uh, the fourth one is creativity and art. So I know personally, um, my happiest memories and the times I felt the most powerful and effective have been when art or music in my case has been involved in the activism that I'm doing. So Rhythms of Resistance Toronto in the streets there for um, uh, Pride Toronto. Um, our four kids chapter, some of the families in our group made a handmade banner instead of just painting one with their kids. Um, so it adds this beauty and inspiration when we're out in the streets. For Kids National was doing this coloring drive uh, to send the coloring page to your um, to a politician. Big murals, like all that colorful beauty, especially I think as parents with young families, especially having that beauty is really important to creating something special and memorable and impactful, um, not just for ourselves, but in the media and with the other goals that we have. Um, and there is this book, Beautiful Trouble, that I have a copy of, but I found really inspiring. It's kind of a bunch of case studies of creative, beautiful tactics that people have used in social change to win campaigns. Um, so some of these ideas are, are found in that book. Um, and the last one is self-compassion and self-care. So um, I think especially as parents, I hope we take this one seriously. I know in our group um, in Montreal, there's fluctuations in people's energy levels or something unexpected happens with their kids or their families and they have to step away or step back and not be as involved as they, as they want to be. But I really feel like self-compassion for yourself and where you're at and what you need is really important to prevent burnout and also model for our kids and for younger activists what it takes to be sustainable in the work that we're doing. Um, and yeah, just looking after yourself and knowing your own boundaries and being upfront and sharing them with the group, I think creates a culture of care within our organizing spaces. So people remember that we're human and not just robots doing a bunch of campaign work. Um, so yeah, those are five things that uh, have really came to the forefront, I guess, when I was thinking about my journey to becoming a climate um, activist. Um, and I guess lastly, just, um, I was sort of asked to share what keeps me personally motivated and inspired. Certainly, I'm sure a lot of these are the same for you, but what keeps me doing this work, even when I feel like I don't have time or energy, um, are the kids. So especially in our community group here, we've gotten to know each other's kids. Um, they're so adorable. Um, you get to see the care and love that they have for the planet and for nature, sort of revives that in me as well. Um, and their, the simplicity that they're able to express things. So because I've exposed my son to a uh, big climate march that happened in September in Montreal, for example, he, he can express like, well, why don't we protect this? Like the way it comes out of his mouth is just so innocent and pure, but right in every way. So I feel like sharing this passion I have with my family and also getting the energy and the way they see things back has been really helpful for me. Um, and as I've been saying this whole time, like connection relationships, the, the, the mainly mothers in our group have who've been the most active, um, knowing that there's other people in the world that are, you know, fearful about the future and what climate change will bring for their kids and the planet and just having a space to share those really raw emotional um, and real feelings with people has been so important. Um, and also, yeah, I guess the creative action that we're able to do together. Um, I know for Mother's Day this Sunday for Kids National, Merofran in Montreal, in Quebec, um, there's lots of things going on around Mother's Day and I feel that energy is keeping me really inspired that there's people, even despite this strange time that we all find ourselves in, in the world, that there's people really pouring their hearts, uh, their green hearts into making a difference. Um, and I guess the last thing is just thinking about my personal ancestors 
um, but also like humans in the past who have done amazing things and have changed the world and improved it. I know sometimes I get bogged down that we haven't, what, why haven't we won climate change? Like how could this, how are we still fighting this? It can feel really heavy, but I try to think of all the ways activists have changed the course of history in the past and it never happens instantly. It's smaller campaign wins over time that builds larger system change. And then I also try to think of um, how bad things could be if we hadn't been out doing the work that many people have been doing for decades and that it could have been a lot worse. So I, I try to keep motivated knowing that our history is really on our side and that there's really strong people um, in our past that have done really amazing, unbelievable things and that we can do that too. So I think, think that's all I wanted to share. Great. Th thank you, Natalie. Um, awesome. There's so much in there that I'd, I'd like to follow up on and I've got, uh, I've got questions about and, and I just want to remind people that if you've got questions or comments that you want to um, share with Natalie or ask Natalie, um, yep, just put them in the chat and we'll gather those for uh, the Q&A later. But yeah, Natalie, absolutely. Um, you know, especially that part about being working together, right, um, and, and getting both support, inspiration, and, and, and sharing that, that mentorship uh, role with, with the people who are in, in this fight together. Um, that's, uh, thank you for making that point. That was, that was really, really helpful. Um, so moving on, and Natalie actually mentioned uh, at the end of her presentation there about uh, a Green Hearts campaign that's going on this weekend tied to Mother's Day. Uh, you may hear a little bit more about that from our next speaker. So um, Tarlin actually comes from comes to us from the other side of the country, uh, Tarlin Razzaghi. Now I'm pronouncing that the Italian way and I'm not sure that's how you pronounce your name, Tarlin, but uh, she grew up in Alberta and then relocated to Vancouver in 2016 uh, for work purposes. Uh, Tarlin practices Aboriginal law and she leads the four kids team in action such as the one that she participated in earlier this morning, which I'm hoping she might share with us a little bit. Uh, Tarlin's son, Zephyr, will have his first birthday on Mother's Day this Sunday. So that's a very cool tie-in. So welcome, Tarlin, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for everyone being here and asking for me to speak for our kids. Um, as uh, Lala mentioned, my name is Tyler Mazagi. Um, sorry, my notes are here. And I'm a member of For Our Kids Vancouver. I was asked to speak here today about why I became involved with For Our Kids, who motivates me, and how I manage to uh, do the For Our Kids work while also parenting. So I will provide you my answers to those questions. Uh, I learned about For Our Kids in August of last year through the Parents for Future Canada Facebook page. At that time, my son was three and a half months. Looking back, I was actually in quite a dark place. I was obsessively reading about the climate crisis on my phone while holding on to my tiny new baby in my arms as he slept. I recall one of my darkest thoughts was of images of extremist climate activists going door to door, gathering up those in households pr producing more than their fair share of greenhouse gases. Worse yet, I actually contemplated whether I would have to join them. Needless to say, I was overwhelmed by the crisis. During my pregnancy, the pure excitement and anticipation of meeting Zephyr had shielded me from my climate anxieties. They magically had disappeared for those three months. The truth is, is just less than a year earlier, I was suffering another kind of torment, the desire to have a child in the face of the climate emergency. It felt selfish bringing a child into a world destined to collapse from global warming. But my biological instinct was to have a child. And on a flight back from the Yukon for work just months before I got pregnant, I watched a documentary called Bear Track. It followed a biologist on his journey to find the world's most elusive and endangered bears. The story of the spectacled bear on the cliffs of the Andean range in Peru really struck me. Um, when the bear was finally seen by biologists, footage was obtained of this bear slowly scaling a steep, near vertical mountainside to reach a small patch of snails on the underside of a rock edge. 
The bear was thin, her habitat bare, and she was risking her life to find the only little nutrient that seemed available. The footage eventually spotted the bear reaching her little baby. She was a mama bear, and that was my takeaway. Animals don't just give up on their species, but instead they go to great lengths to go on and to provide for their young. So I did decide to have a child and not give up. And it was in having a child that I became committed to doing something, anything to contribute to the climate cause for my son, Zephyr, who motivates my for our kids work. And really the work is the only way I have been able to manage my fears and anxieties about the climate crisis. So how did I get involved? I'd been researching possible local organizations around Vancouver, trying to find a parents group, which seemed to be the only natural choice since Zephyr was my motivation. At the time, I was having troubles finding an active local group, and I made a post on Facebook on the Parents for Future Canada website asking for any local parents interested in doing something. Someone directed me to For Our Kids, which was brand new at the time. I attended an introductory call with For Our Kids with Matt, who gave me a very basic formula to host a house party. I'm good at following rules, so it was simple and made sense to me. And so I decided to host a playground party. And I started by emailing my own um, parent contacts to invite them with an honest email about my fears and motivations for getting involved and my hopes for change. I was beyond thrilled to receive a positive response from several parents. It, of course, brought a sense of relief. I was not the only one. What surprised me the most, however, was that, I, that parents that I, who I spoke to regularly had the same fears as, and anxieties for their children as me, but I had no idea before my invite to the playground party. Since then, our group has met regularly. We have brainstormed endlessly about action ideas. Our initial interest was to take on food waste as a climate action, and we have dedicated hours researching possible projects on that topic. And you can ask us anything about food waste reduction strategies, we know it. <laughs> then right before we developed our project idea, the COVID crisis hit, and we are now motivated to put our efforts in the green recovery as long as our, uh, along with our food waste strategies. Um, we are helping to host a virtual town hall in Vancouver, and this morning we participate in the Green Heart campaign by making large hearts for our local MPs, Joyce Murray and John Wilkinson, um, asking them to support a Mothers United Green Recovery. How do I balance my four kids with parenting? It is not easy and it's even harder adding professional work to the mix. And I think the most important thing to do is to acknowledge that it's a challenge. I'm not sure I found the right balance, but I, want, but I thought I could offer a few words that I try and live by. They are, all things, all change begins simply with the setting of an intention. Hard work is always rewarded. Don't strive for perfection. Do anything, no matter how trivial it seems. Fake it until you make it. And most importantly, it is absolutely acceptable to not turn on your camera for Zoom calls to save your extra time in getting ready. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Words uh, to the wise, for sure, uh, that <laughs> last one. But on, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tarlin. Um, that whole message about um, reaching out and connecting with people and being honest about your fears and your concerns and then discovering, right, that there are mm -hmm. others who have those same fears and concerns. Uh, that's, that's huge. That's, that's a huge uh, takeaway for me because, um, you know, so often we keep conversations at that superficial level mm -hmm. uh, and, and we don't really share what's, what's, in, our, what's in our hearts. Uh, and that's, so that's very powerful to hear that that's what made the difference in mm -hmm. your group coming together. So excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, very much for that. Uh, again, any questions for, for Tarlin or comments? I see some coming through on the chat and that's great. Um, so a little change of pace now. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce uh, Mackenzie Harris. Mackenzie is a grad student at the University of Guelph in Ontario. And she's currently working on local level climate and social justice issues with Fridays for Future Guelph. 
And at the national level, Mackenzie is an organizer at Climate Strike Canada, which is made up of student activists uh, all across the country. She's particularly interested in addressing health inequalities faced by marginalized populations using a just recovery, specifically through embracing Indigenous ways of knowing. So Mackenzie is here. She's one of the next generation of climate activists who are already making their mark uh, here and elsewhere. And uh, Mackenzie's joining us today to talk about inspiration. So welcome, Mackenzie. Great. Thanks so much, everybody. And thank you for that wonderful introduction, Leela. And thank you for inviting me today. Um, it's really exciting to see this many people on the call. Um, and thank you for taking the time, uh, especially when there's so much going on. Um, it, it's, it's really encouraging. And so this gives me hope is to see this many people uh, on the call today. So in terms of my main motivator when I was asked that question, um, the answer is really, really simple for me. And it's just that I can't let greed win. Um, the number one thing we tell our kids is to do the right thing. I think that's that as soon as they come out of the womb, you tell them to do the right thing. And most people in power are not doing the right thing. They are not acting responsibly. And so I think when we have these solutions available, I mean, we literally have everything we need to make this transition happen. Um, I, I just, I couldn't imagine throwing away this earth that we've had for however many years, I, I, I wish I knew the number, for a hundred years worth of greed. Um, that's not okay with me. And so that's something that I think we all need to fight for. We can be scared of that or we can fight for it, right? Um, so when asked the question about what actually inspired me to act, it's a little bit deeper for me. Um, so, and actually my story is quite quite similar to some of the stories that I'd, I'd heard. Um, and, and so I think it, it, it really comes full circle um, with my story. So about 24 years ago, my mom was driving along on the highway and she had to pull over uh, in absolute tears gushing from her eyes um, because she was discussing the topic of having kids. And um, even at the time, scientists were already saying climate change is coming. Um, this is when people weren't listening to scientists and my mom was quite involved in the community. Um, and she was terrified and she was asking a legitimately um, valid question, which was, is it ethical for me to bring kids into this world right now knowing what I know? Um, and my dad just said to her, you know what, you have to believe in this generation, you have to give them a chance to turn it around. Um, and I do hope he meant he was going to help me do it as well. Uh, but, you know, I, here I am today, 23 years later, um, and I really am not doing this work because I feel that it's my duty, my sworn duty to do so, but really just because it's a responsibility. And, um, you know, 10 years from now, they're saying we have about 10 years to turn this around. That's when I'm going to be asking that same question. Can I have kids? Um, and I really hope that I don't have to ask the question that my mom had to ask, is it ethical to do so? I wanna be able to look my kids in the eyes and say, you know, I did everything I could to fight for you. Um, and, you know, we're gonna see where that goes, um, but I, I'm hoping that I can, that I can uh, say that at least. Um, and then I also want to mention one of the things that really inspires me. I mean, I'm actually on the, the older end of the youth spectrum. The high school students are unbelievable. Um, youth activists are by far the most inspiring to me. Um, if you aren't following groups like um, two off the top of my head or March for Our Lives is one in the States um, and Fridays for Future are primarily student run uh, groups, activist groups. They're fearless. Um, they, they, inspire me like no other um, and they are just able to bring each other together in a way that I can't do um, so 100% follow those groups if you can you'll you'll gain some inspiration that way um, and then the last points I wanted to make about just what keeps my energy going in this activism um, the number one thing and this is to reiterate uh, I can't remember if it was Natalie's point um, or the former speakers um, a support system is key it's um, and that I would say primarily um, getting that from an activist group is, is essential. Um, so if you haven't found your group yet, continue to look um, because nobody will understand these issues like, like activists will. Um, if you aren't actively involved in this work, you won't understand the emotional toll. Um, truly this work is the highest highs and the lowest lows. Um, and so you need people to be able to speak to these issues um, about. And then lastly, to, I think it was Natalie's point again, to just reiterate um, self-care. So setting boundaries is essential in this work. Um, whether it be leaving one or two days a week to just 
do no activism, to not look at your social media, to not look at news, um, or even if you can't manage that, to just have a time to shut off your phone um, or to shut off social media at the end of the day and not answer emails, not answer anything, um, just so that activism isn't your entire life and it's not your entire existence and, and you have a life outside of it, right? Um, and the last point that I want to make is, is just that this, this COVID event that we've seen is what's known as a trigger event in history. Um, and it's really created a, an opportunity to do the politically impossible. I mean, we're really seeing people join the movement that have never considered joining it before. Um, we're seeing politicians slowing down and actually listening to petitions. I mean, we saw this recently with student activists um, who called for increased funding and that was achieved and they, they cited the petition. Um, so these are things that they're happening and people are getting on board. So I would say, you know, if you're feeling a little bit down about activism now is, is literally the best time to get involved because people are getting involved like never before. Um, so that's all I have to say. And if you do have questions, you're welcome to leave them in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mackenzie. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, uh, that really is an uplifting message. Uh, and I'm sure everybody on the call uh, felt that. I have, to, I do have to share really quickly that when Mackenzie was was just outlining for me, you know, the basis of her story and what she was going to present, I said, gee, I'm really glad you sent me that ahead of time so that I'm forewarned and I won't break down while you're saying it. I've sealed myself against that. So uh, excellent. Thank you so much for being with us, Mackenzie. And, um, uh, you know, I, I also, I really want you to know that you yourself are, are, are an inspiration. I've seen that with the Fridays for Future uh, Guelph group. You really do uh, inspire hope in the future. So thank you very much for that and for being with us today. All right, I'm going to move on now to uh, our next guest. I'm really pleased to uh, introduce Marie-Ève Leclerc. She is a coordinator with Mère au Front, and you've heard us mention them a couple of times today. Uh, they are a Montreal-based group of mothers across Quebec. And they're passionate about demanding real climate action from elected leaders. Uh, Marie Eve has been an activist throughout her career as a project manager with uh, manager with Equiter. And she is going to join us today to talk about Mère Front and the Green Hearts campaign that's happening right now uh, that uh, Tarlin and, and uh, Natalie both mentioned. So welcome, Marie Eve. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be there. Um, yeah, so I'm based in Quebec City, and uh, yes, as you said, I work for Equiter, and I've been uh, organizing uh, quite a few marches uh, for climate in front of the Parliament in Ottawa for five years ago. And um, I've always been like climate is my is my passion to work on. Um, and yeah, so Maro France is um, so in, in English it's Mario Stepin but now we're partnering with for our kids uh, to be across the Canada so Mario Franc uh, was um, uh, created uh, two months ago for with the purpose of organizing March in Ottawa on Mother's Day um, it was uh, 40 uh, moms from Montreal who um, they had it's actually it's two the story is really not interesting it's really nice it's two moms uh, that were concerned about um, about climate and one was involved, very involved as a um, uh, ecologist, environmentalist, and the other wasn't. And, uh, and so when they both met and shared their concern and fear about the climate uh, for their kids, uh, they decided to, to do something. And they, they've, they've called their friends and they um, invited them for, for um, uh, for a night to talk about about this, and forty of them uh, came um, to talk about this, and they decided together that they were angry and they were anxious, and they had to a message to tell the government, the federal government, and moms were angry. So and um, and uh, so they wanted to organize a march on Mother's Day in Ottawa. So this move and that movement just like built up and. Um, and within like a couple of weeks, like there was more uh, women's interest in. Uh, so it took about like a, a month to build that campaign, and um, and we launched to, uh, the week just before the COVID. So um, so then we had to uh, redefine our actions. Um, so because now we cannot gather all together, 
and uh, and that's it. So we have to uh, reinvent the campaign, and the movement has built up. Um, in, in now we are like three thousand. So within two months, we have gained like three thousand mums only in in the province of Quebec. I wanted to take action, and uh, it, so so um, we've. We've thought about this uh, Green Heart uh, campaign uh, to express ourselves um, uh, to the government. So we, we did for our kids, we sent uh, a letter uh, to all the MPs, so the 338 uh, MPs, uh, with a, a letter explaining what we wanted, because we want a long climate and we want a green recovery, and a long climate that's based on, on science. Uh, so we explained who we were, that we were angry and we were active and we want them to listen to us. And um, so they all received as well this green heart, which is at the back. So, and we're asking if you support our demands, sign the name of your kids. Um, so who are you involved in politics for? So who are your kids and why are you, uh, what do you want? Like, is, do you want to save the future of our kids? And um, so they all received this letter, and uh, because we were supposed to, to to be in Ottawa, we've decided to visit their um, uh, to visit their their office, and uh, pull and stick our green hearts on on their um, on on the on the window. So and um, so it's happening today, and uh, I went with uh, some mums here in Quebec. Uh, this morning, so we're we're gonna post. So this is what it looks like, and there is at the moment. Maybe you, you'll see. So this is my MP, which is at the finance uh, uh, MP, and uh, we're targeting Trudeau, Stephen Gilbo, um, McKenna, and uh, so there's about like eight, ten, uh, eight to ten locations, like people, moms seeking, seeking, seeking their, seeking their green. And um, yeah, and send uh, and sending them as well. Like so, we so we're sticking that in the window, and we've asked moms to do their green hearts and write the name of their kids and write a message and send it in the mail to their MP as well. So we're trying to get some attraction, and uh, there's some um, op op uh, opteds that will be published this weekend uh, from a mom. And uh, we've done the same in local um, local uh, medias um, for Earth Day uh, two weeks ago, and uh, so so we've seen that there's like a lot of mothers that want to do some action, and have never been involved into um, most of them have never been involved into uh, an environmental movement. So this is just so exciting, and uh, I'm very enthusiastic about working with this. And ne the next step is creating. Um, local groups to help mothers and support them to take action in their local, um, uh, in, in their cities or um, uh, region, and always like uh, take actions toward the politicians. So, um, so it's a it's a new movement, but that's very exciting. Thank you. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. There we go. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, I can see just by the comments, people are, are uh, just saying how impressed they are with how that group grew so quickly, right? Uh, but it just shows what is the motivating factor there. It's that love for their kids and the concern uh, for those future generations, right? That's 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 what motivating that's what's motivating people to get up uh, out of their out of their chairs and out of their houses, although not so much lately, I guess. Um, but uh, to do yes, to do uh, something. Mm -hmm. Here. Go ahead. Can I? <laughs> yep. Well, this movement, like it's been uh, well. We're used to fight uh, against the enemy in, in Quebec, mm -hmm. so I think it's in, mm -hmm. we're fighting for fish, we're fighting uh, for, for a couple of things uh, around like, our culture. And we had to fight against Energy East, probably most of you might remember that pipeline um, from uh, Alberta that was coming. And this, so this movement around climate has built up through the years towards mostly that that campaign so uh so the concern about climate is is 
it's like we don't discuss it about it. It's happening, and we we don't want fossil fuel. So, so the movement is growing, and uh, so we've built that up. Uh, you might see it like um, on my like I've organized much, but like here you have like this is in front of the parliament uh, in Quebec. So that was twenty five thousand people uh, in front of. Of the parliament, and um, so that's five years ago, and um, and we did the same six months after in front of the uh, Ottawa Parliament. Um, so um, and it was mostly people from Quebec. So we're used to protest. We're used to ask something to the government, and we were really close to our MPs as well. Uh, so I think it's just um, it's it's uh, it's it's in the culture. I think it too, and as well this movement from the mothers had um, has um, uh, um, people were uh, famous people so um, so it really helped the artists are in this as well so the movement is um, it's exciting so I think that 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 explains why yeah. although it's different it's moms and moms have not been involved in into that before most of them so um, it's kind it, it's interesting Definitely interesting times to, to be involved. So um, why don't we move into the uh, question and answer session then uh, a little bit. Um, uh, some of the questions that you're, in, that you're asking, Mariev, has, has touched on. Uh, I don't know, Galen, whether there are uh, other questions that have come up along the way that you'd like to share? I haven't seen any other questions. Lots of comments and, and lots of yeah. encouraging comments. People are obviously really moved by all of these presentations as I have been too. This has been really awesome. But I don't see questions. Um, if folks have any, they can put into the chat now. Otherwise, um, I think we can move fast. But yeah, that was the, the big question is, how in the world did you do it, Maria? <laughs> did all of you do it? It was really right. awesome. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, how about, uh, since we have... Oh, you know what, uh, sorry, got... there, um, there is one question now. Jennifer, uh, Jen Rose um, put this question in. She says, I've been out of the loop lately. Can we do the Green Arts thing here in BC? Is it already happening? And um, I wonder, uh, Tarlin, if you would be okay with me going to you to answer that question. I'm going to click on mute and you can tell me go away or you can answer um, it. I, I can. I don't know if I'll cover it well, but yeah, for sure. Uh, everyone is encouraged to, um, uh, if you go to the 4Kids website, it, tell, it gives you a step-by-step -step guide, but everyone's encouraged to make their own hearts at home, write their own personal message to their MP, then their do two hearts, write your personal message to your MP, send one heart to your MP, which is free, no postage is required, and take and keep your other heart for social media purposes and post a picture of yourself on social media. And if you have any other green heart campaign ideas, that's great too. We posted the large hearts on your our MP's office's front door. Um, but yeah, that that is what I understand the green heart campaign to be, and everyone here should do it today, this weekend as soon as you can. <laughs> awesome, thanks, Tarlin. And yeah, you, Tarlin, you sent some, or you posted to Facebook and Twitter some great photos of you guys, your your work this morning. And I see that Mary Ev has posted um, a media story, a news story that you were interviewed for, Tarlin, that was posted this morning. So folks can check that out in the chat. Um, and I'll throw it back to you, Lala. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, and we just hot off the press have some uh, photos from the action that was in Toronto in front of Bill Morneau's office and I love them so I'm going to share them right now. Just uh, give me a second because I just pulled them up on my screen but I'm going to share my screen uh, so you can see them. Check it out. I love this. So this is from our group in Toronto uh, and they were in front of Bill Morneau's office uh, uh, with his pal um, with his pal Justin Trudeau there, and they've both been nicely adorned with green hearts uh, with their messages. This is Anne uh, on the left. Oh, sorry. This is Anne on the left. 
uh, with the, the appropriate mask on. Um, and this, I believe in the background, this beautiful heart here is with, um, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe, Lynn, that those are your beautiful grandchildren. So um, this is wonderful. Bill Morneau's office, from what I remember, uh, is not open today, but uh, they, did, um, they did go down and uh, they posted, took some pictures, and then dropped their green hearts into the um, uh, into the mailbox, the mail slot there. So Mr. Monroe's off, Mr. Morneau's office staff will see them first thing on Monday. So that's great. Um, please do go to uh, either our website. Uh, we'll put up those links at the end of the session, but either our website, which is for our kids.ca um, or uh, Mer au France. Dot org, and uh, you'll find more information about this if you follow us on Facebook um, at For Our Kids Canada and at Mère au Front. You will uh, find the instructions there for uh, for the action and for posting some photos of yourself. We will send out a lot more information about this. Not to worry, um, it's something that's just uh, just kind of finding its legs right now and just uh, just picking up steam. Um, and we'll be carrying this campaign forward uh, as we go. But definitely a great Mother's Day climate action to be involved in. And thank you so much to those who are out there involved in this today um, as we're speaking. This is this is climate action in uh, in real time so it's it's wonderful um, all right it's uh, it's been a fairly intense and uh, profound hour it's gone by really quickly uh, and I want to thank you all for participating we're coming up to uh, just a few minutes left and uh, we do have a couple more uh, things uh, we'd like to share with you we want to offer you a chance to decompress a little before we sign off so in just a minute I'm going to introduce Anna Gateman who will be leading us in a reflection uh, just to take us down a little bit um, and then we'll welcome back the Reed Jameson band for for, for another song. So I'll just look after some closing details now and then we uh, I don't have to interrupt that vibe as that's going on. Um, again, a reminder that our next webinar is on June 19th. Um, and the recording of this presentation today will be available on the For Our Kids YouTube page and we'll share the link on both our website, uh, our Facebook page, and we'll be sending it out to anyone who is registered for today's session uh, by email. So I, I feel like this is going to be a popular one because it's just an amazing, amazing hour here. Um, I'd like to thank each of our amazing presenters. Um, and thank Galen for co-hosting with me and uh, a special heartfelt thanks here on Mother's Day weekend to each of our four Our Kids team leaders uh, and to the mothers out there who are wearing their green hearts on their sleeves today and posting them on the MP's office windows. Thank you to each of us, each of you for joining us um, and uh, have, have a, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, and so I would like to introduce Anna Gateman now. Anna is going to lead us through, uh, through a reflection just to close off here. Um, Anna is a London, Ontario based yoga teacher, a mother and an environmentally conscious citizen. She's excited to share environmental awareness and sustainability through her yoga practice. And you can find out more about Anna at vitalfitness.ca. We'll share that link as well. Um, I have worked with Anna in the past and uh, I just, I love her vibe. It's, it's great and, I, and I'm excited to share that all with you. So I'll, I'll pass it over to Anna and then we will um, move on to a closing song by the Reed Jameson Band. So over to you, Anna. Okay, thank you, Lola, for the lovely <laughs> introduction. Um... So if you want to shut off your, your camera, that's fine. No, no pressure. Since it is a meditation, um, just to get you inside um, into the feelings of what we're doing here today. So during this pandemic, I've been sort of helping myself by pulling these little gratitude messages. Um, and I got one today that it says, inspired action is nothing more than the expression of gratitude. Okay, so don't ever think what you're doing is wasted. And I just love this message that was received for me today, which is really for you as well. So I want you to, uh, my daughter here is on the call to Madison. I don't know if you can see her. Hopefully she'll wave. She's located in, in Halifax. I have five children and they, there she is. <laughs> 
Hi, Madison. Anyways, and Gabe's, and Gabe's is the fellow that helped me write this. He's an environmental um, graduate from Trite University, very actively involved. He's worked with Sustainability Kingston and some places out there. So he's, he's very, very knowledgeable and he helped me write the meditation today. So I want you to sit down, <clears throat> lie down, whatever you feel comfortable, sort of grounded, grounding yourself, maybe close your eyes and just get a sense of your body. Make any movements. I'm going to guide you through this meditation. So hopefully you can hear me okay. So just again, find a comfortable seated position, floor, your chair. And I want you to thank you for taking the time to sit and reflect on your relationship with the environmental issues. The first step of any journey begins with motivation and intent. And during this meditation, we will create space to acknowledge and honor the emotions that motivate us to become more responsible stewards for the future generations of humans, plants, and animals that will share this planet with us. So on any given day, the state of our Earth's environmental health can be overwhelming. It can fill us with fear for us and our children's futures. It can freeze us with feelings of guilt or set us on fire with anger. All of these feelings are valid. All of them are healthy. Human response to what can in many ways be understood as humanity waking up, find our house is crumbling down around us. So each of these feelings, fear, guilt, anger, hopelessness, are parts of the full human experience that many of us all too often shy away from. And this is especially true for mothers. Our first response to such powerful emotions is often to hide or suppress them. This response is also perfectly human and completely natural. However, when we bury our emotions, we limit our ability to accept and draw wisdom from them. Emotions are signals, more powerful than words, that can help us understand our relationship with the world and give us guidance. When we take the time to process them, each of emotions, no matter their size or intensity, can be understood as a message, a guiding light showing us the path forward. So with this in mind, just turn your attention to your breath and let the feelings you have about environmental issues start to wash over you whether it's anger, loss, or guilt, let the feelings come and go in this space. Now just exhale and take a deep breath through your nose. Fill your inhale, filling your lungs with the strength you need for some of these emotions. And exhale long and slow through your mouth and feel them release and travel out the bottoms of your feet. Now breathe in through your nose and feel your strength rise again, new energy filling your lungs, your mind, your heart. Breathe out through your mouth and feeling shrink in size and power. And breathe in through your nose and feel yourself grow powerful, grow calm, grow focused. Breathe out and push out fear, doubt, guilt, hopelessness out through the bottom of your feet. Breathe in and feel energy in your lungs rush through your body. And breathe out and see the feelings outside your body, body separating from you sitting calmly, waiting patiently for you. 
breathe in and collect all your inner strength and courage. Breathe out, relax your body, relax your breath, and step towards your emotions. Now with your new power, walk towards the feeling that pulls you. Doesn't matter if it's the anger, fear, or guilt. You can approach this with confidence and say calmly, I see you, I hear you, I know you have a message for me, please tell me why you are here. For the next couple breaths, just listen with all your strength, passion, just listen. And now, now that you have heard its message, take a deep breath in through your nose, gathering your energy, then breathe out and thank your emotion. Turn it and say, thank you for your message. I hear you and I understand you. Watch your emotion smile and settle calmly back into place. Now take a deep breath in and thank yourself for listening. To honor whatever spoke to you. Thank yourself for making time and finding strength. Take one last breath in and release it all on the out breath. Remember, you have all the strength and power you need to make a lasting impact on the world. And I'd like to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And again, continue the great work that you're doing. And thank you so much for having me this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, very empowering, and I and I love that thought of just listening to what is the message that that emotion is trying to get through to you, and giving that some space so that that message can get through. Thank you very much. Thanks for being part of this. Um, thanks everyone uh, for hanging in there with us. Um, uh, we are going to uh, give the stage to. Uh, Carolyn and Reed again uh, to send us off with a song, but I do want to thank uh, all of you once again for joining us um, and uh, for all of your energy and all of your your positive energy and your and your and your uh, thoughts today. Um, and you will be hearing more from us. We hope we'll be hearing more from you. You can always contact us uh, on Facebook uh, or contact Galen or I, uh, and we'll talk more about how you can get involved with for our kids. Um, just because I know you've all been inspired to do that today just by hearing our amazing presenters. Wish you all a very, very good weekend and a very happy Mother's Day. And Reed and Carolyn, I will pass it over to you. And I'm hoping that Reed and Carolyn are still here. <laughs> They're still muted. There we go. Oh, how awkward. There we go. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely um, chill out and centering grounding moment. That was beautiful. Um, we're delighted to, uh, to have taken in all of that. We're really um, big on what we can do as individuals to make a difference and um, you can probably guess what we uh, what we want everyone to do. Um, the song, uh, the reason why we got involved with this is that Galen, uh, I think it was his parents, really, really wanted uh, a friend of ours who's a musician, Mary Margaret O'Hara, to sing a song, but uh, she's locked down with no ability to do this. So we stepped in. Um, we thought it might be appropriate to sing one of her songs that's uh, pretty special. I don't know if your folks will know it, Galen, because it's not on her big record, Miss America. It's, uh, it's one she wrote with her sisters. I think it's sort of more of a Christmas song, but it doesn't mention Christmas, so we can make it a Mother's Day song because moms seem to know that they've got to get in the boat and row. And uh, this song is called uh, This Is What I Want, and uh, this is what we want 
everyone to do. <laughs> if everybody could get down with that, pretend that heart's green. We feel like that's, that's our, our work here is to encourage people to, to realize just how much of an impact we can have as individuals and especially as, as groups when we get together and encourage each other. So here's a little song written by our friend Mary Margaret O'Hara. And my handsome husband Reed's going to sing it for you. Thanks, we everybody. Hope, we hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you. Good luck. Some unspoken words to move a cold heart. The hands to set free what's falling apart. With all of our mind, we know that love lives and all that it takes and all that it gives. This is what I want. This is what I want. Do all children see much clearer than we? Get out of their own way and let themselves be as light to a fearful darkness that was. They'll move to forgive, especially us. This is what I want 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 What I could give you, you already have what I could tell you, you already know. These things will last long after we're gone. And through them our true lights will have shone. This is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want This is what I want Are there any words? No, nothing to say But sounds of our heartbeats A heartbeat away And closer than air Bright as the stars they seem to have gone, they're not very far. This is what I want. 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 Thank you. Come uh, find us on uh, at readjameson.com. And uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your day and for sharing your energy and uh, magnificent uh, proactivity with us. We hope you guys uh, go far and we'll share it with our friends. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn and Reed. Um, I see that Galen's got his family out there watching you. I don't know if you can see them on the screen or not, but they're <laughs> awfully cute. <laughs> um, and Thanks for, thanks for uh, actually uh, allowing us to be the first group that you do your first live stream with. This is our very first live this. stream. It, yeah. We, need, we, we so. were too, too paralyzed to do, do it for anything else, but we needed a good cause, mm -hmm. and this is it. So Good. Excellent. Thank you so much. I hope it was Thank a good you. experience for us. For you, great. it was a great awesome. experience for us. I know that. Um, I'm going to just put up my. I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to put up a few um, links for uh, for everyone, just so that they can uh, see nice. where we're at. Um, and so, if you've got any uh, questions um or any um uh, you want to follow up on some of the links that we talked about here today uh here's some of us 
some of the links on here for you. Uh, for our kids, we have a special page, uh, so Mother's Day page that outlines the Green Hearts campaign on it. Um, you can find us at For Our Kids Canada, mereaufrance.org. You can find them on Facebook at mereaufrance. Uh, Readjamison.com, do you love that music? Uh, ClimateStrikeCanada.org, and uh, Anna's website is uh, vitalfitness.ca. Uh, we'll also be sending out some, some other links and some other information to you uh, with the recording of this session. So you can look for that over the next few days. Thanks again, everyone, for being with us. And uh, have a have a wonderful have a wonderful weekend. And I hope you we see you again uh, at our next session. Thanks very much.